thanks for speaking with us on Sahar Reporter. So it's been since 1995 that Ken Sahar Weaver was killed by the Nigerian military uh, after dropped on charges, trumped up charges were brought against him and uh, other Oguni activists. Where would you say uh, is the struggle for the emancipation of the Ogoni people today or what he was trying to accomplish before he was killed? Um, well, I think we're at the crossroads again um, because, you know, obviously we have the trial is, uh, is coming up and that may have an impact on, on uh, what happens. When he was killed, the rumor or maybe the information was that his body was actually doused in acid mm -hmm. Uh, before he was buried. Was his body ever recovered? I mean, did you yeah, have father, that closure? My father's been buried. What about the others? Uh, they've had the opportunity to bury their own. How have, has it been for, for the family uh, of Ken Sarawiwa since he died? I mean, this um, tragic death. Uh, well, it's not something you, you, you dwell on. I mean, it's, not, it's, an, it's an issue that's, you know, obviously at the back of your mind. And um, like I said, the challenge uh, when somebody dies like that, I think the challenge is 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 to in in a sense you have to try to find a strategy to, for survival. Yeah. Uh, you need to move forward, but um, um, moving forward and forgetting, um, moving on, implies that you're forgetting the memory of your father, which is exactly what they wanted to do when they tried to kill him. Um, there's this tension between remembering and forgetting, and so I need, at least for me anyway, that's that's been a difficult thing. You know, you want to move on with your life, but at the same time, you have a you know you have a court case that's taken 12 years to go through the legal system, um, and then there's still issues um, in the community. Um, some of the things that you know he struggled for are still very much alive in the community. There is family, his businesses. I mean, all those things. So it's it's been difficult to try to manage all the different aspects of his legacy. I read your book and you seem to suggest that in his last days, you know, as you came in contact with him, it, it seemed as if he knew he was going to die. In, uh... it, it, you know, it's a complex thing, this writing, right? You know, writing about uh, the past, you know. You, you know, sometimes a memory becomes a memory because it's convenient for you right now but it may not be a very solid memory when you, because you know, it's a memory that you've invented in order to deal with your, your current situation. I don't know if that makes, makes yeah. sense to you. Are you a little bit critical of him too in the book, you know, as a father? It's a very simple book, really. It's a book about somebody who didn't understand his father hmm. and spent, uh, you know, spent was confused by the earliest memories he had of a father, of somebody who was the center of his life. Mm -hmm. um, suddenly, then against this memory of a father was a much more distant uh, person. So, um, set against the backdrop of this very intense political struggle. So the book is a very simple attempt to try and reconcile those different memories of a father. Um, and of course, you know, people focus on my feelings of my father when when I was between the age of I don't know, 12 and, uh, and 20. You know, people, you know, you have this time when you, you struggle with your father. It's a very necessary process everybody must go through. Um, um, uh, you know, so if that's critical, I mean, it's maybe it was just, I was just showing what I felt as a, as a teenager, uh, which is not necessarily, you know, looking back on it now. Um, it's, you know, one has a very, very different uh, memory um, or feelings about your father. If Ken were to be alive today, what do you think he would say with the militancy in the Niger Delta? What do you, where, would you, where do you think he would stand, you know? Well, he would feel vindicated because he predicted hmm. um, that whether, you know, the, the non-violent uh, approach that he advocated, whether that was um, that the military's response um, through violence would would send a signal to to the rest of the Niger Delta. So I think he he would feel vindicated, but he wouldn't be happy because, of course, he always believed that a non-violent approach to, to 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 the challenge is the best way forward. What about the Ogoni struggle? Did you feel like you were just thrust into the struggle that maybe you knew your father was doing the fighting, you know, you were distant from it, 
and suddenly the man is dead and everybody's knocking on your door to be the next person to step up and uh, continue the struggle. How did you fit into that? Well, you know, I mean, it was his life, his struggle. Um, he did it for us, uh, for the future. And um, so you have to buy into it in order to understand it. And then you have to make a decision, you know, whether you're going to engage with it or, or you know, st step aside. So, um, um, uh, for me, navigating my way through the complexities of, of that has, has, you know, defined the last 10, 15 years of my life. Um, but it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's my life. <laughs> So you mentioned that you serve in this government. What do you do for this government? I'm a special assistant to the president of international affairs. So it has nothing to do with Ogonia land? No, no, no. So you've never had any role in bringing about a solution as well, the I son joined, of cancer? Well, you joined, carry a lot of weight. I joined government um, really to try and help to solve this issue. You know, at the tail end of the Obasanjo administration, um, there was an opportunity, an attempt to resolve the issue and I looked at it and I consulted widely within my community and my family and it was felt that this was um, we should at least take the opportunity and see whether um, we could resolve the issue we never had we couldn't do it under the Obasanjo regime and um, so I felt that it was the lessons that we had learned from that um, I should try to stay on and see whether I can use the lessons we've learned to advise the community, the federal government and um, in, in this issue. So is, is the federal government in any way concerned or involved in the lawsuit against Shell in no. New York? Um, the lawsuit in New York is purely to do between private individuals and, uh, and uh, Shell. What do you know about this trial that you're willing to share with the public? Ah, well, the case is, uh, you know, we believe that Shell's fingerprints were all over the, uh, the extrajudicial murders, the torture, the hangings of Ogoni people, um, the wasting of uh, Ogoni villages, the exile of many people. Um, so we, we believe that Shell should be made accountable. What I understand from Ogoni land is that they no longer want anything to do with Shell. Mm. Um, would Shell come out of this as a stakeholder who has lost out entirely, or is there any consideration for their return to Ghana land? Well, the, the social license to operate is, a, is, is something which I think international oil companies are realizing is as valuable as their commercial right to operate. Hmm. And, um, and again, it very much depends. I mean, federal government is disposed, you know, the, the, the Mr. President made a pronouncement uh, over a year ago about the operatorship. You know, he felt that the communities and and, and, and Shell um, can no longer agree. Um, so they were looking at different options. But, I, but I, you know, I think all those things, there are complex issues here. Um, um, but clearly there's a, there's, a, there's a disconnect between the, between the local community and, and, and the operator of the joint venture. So somehow something has to be worked out that enables um, oil production to begin on a sustainable platform, which is, I think, what the community would like. Some of the liabilities of, of, of uh, the previous operator um, be addressed, um, which in some cases there have been attempts to address that. And also for the federal government to derive a benefit from, from those resources. Why should we have the federal government considered uh, you know, uh, coming back to Golden Land to benefit in any way when in the first place they were responsible for the problems? Well, you have to, first of all, you have to disassociate one administration from, from uh, you know, this administration from the, from the military government. Um, the very fact that I serve in this administration means that, you know, there's no way I could have served under <laughs> the Abacha administration that, that, that uh, was part of the uh, architecture that murdered my father and the others. So you have to disassociate that. Right now there's a space, which there wasn't in 1993 to 1995, where community oil company and federal government um, have a space in which people are prepared to, to look at the options and try to find a win-win solution for everybody. You were the receiving end of the Abasha regime, very brutal. Your dad was killed. You mm -hmm. couldn't travel to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Under Abbasanjo, you had a chance to work with government, and now you have a chance to work with another government. If you had to make comparisons, mm -hmm. who do you, would you say they have uh, expanded the space uh, the most for 
for this kind of issues to be resolved between these three regimes? I mean, I accept Abacha, of course. <laughs> Look, I think the proof of all of this is what happens. I mean, history will judge uh, at this point in time. I mean, I joined the government at the tail end of the Anambasanjo regime. You know, for me, it was a very new experience. Um, I barely, I mean, that regime, I think, had maybe three or four months of operation before it, it went into a, a kind of election mode. Um, and, you know, when you join government, it takes you a long time. It takes you at least six months to a year before you even understand how government works, what your position is, your role is. and. So, I mean, I just took the opportunity to, to study the environment that, that, that I was in.